Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and today I'm going to be showing you a really useful VS Code extension for working with regular expressions and towards the end of this video I'm going to be going over a couple more things which I found recently in VS Code which you can enable to make your life easier. So let's begin with the regular expression extension. So you want to go inside the extensions panel and do a search for uh, regex previewer. So this extension right here is going to allow you to preview your regular expression patterns and any matches um, which can be found based on your pattern. So once you have it installed right here, um, I'm just going to go back inside uh, my JavaScript file and once installed, you can now enable that feature. So I can say, for example, const regex is equal to then put a really basic pattern to match a single number. I'll do backslash D uh, just like this. Now, once you've enabled or once you've defined your regular expression, there's going to be a new option to test regex in the top left corner of your line. If you click on this button, it is going to show you um, a bunch of essentially just dummy text to help with your regular expression. So all of this here is just generated by the extension itself. Um, and it's just a good starting point for your, uh, for your pattern. So we can see here upon selecting uh, this pattern right here, I have this single zero digit highlighted in that yellowish color, all right? Now, of course, we can see that uh, not all of the numbers have been highlighted uh, in the file on the right side here. Um, that is because of a couple of reasons. Well, the first reason would uh, be simply because my pattern only matches a single character or single digit. So I can change this by, of course, including a plus at the end um, of that last token there. And now, of course, we match um, any number of digits that come after another. Um, and of course, it is then being blocked by the space since I haven't included a space character as part of my pattern. But we can still see that these digits down here are still not getting matched. Now, this uh, is because of, once again, a couple of reasons, but you can just simply enable the global flag at the end of your regular expression. And of course, now you have all of the, uh, the matches are now highlighted but you may not wish to simply change your, uh, your pattern just for the extension, right? Just say your code doesn't actually want to match on a global flag. You can actually, by using the extension, essentially insert those flags uh, you know, in your pattern without actually changing it. So in the bottom left corner, we can see we get not adding uh, the G and M flags. If you click on that button, it is now going to add those flags that we can see right here. Um, everything is being highlighted, but we haven't got the global flag on the expression itself. Now, it's also worth mentioning that you don't need to use this auto-generated dummy text on the right side. You can also uh, just make your own uh, blank document like this and simply include things to match. For example, I can say 871 as an example, right? It is currently not highlighted, but if I was to click on the pattern, we can see it now becomes highlighted. And one last thing to quickly mention regarding uh, this extension is that if you're not sure if it's enabled or not, you can tell by the fact that there's going to be in the bottom left corner in your status bar that uh, that adding GM or um, not adding GM uh, button right there. To enable the extension or turn it on and off, you simply do Control Alt M and it is going to, like I said, enable or disable the extension. So I'll just press Control Alt M again and we can see now in the bottom left corner, it has re-enabled the extension. So. Like I said, this thing here is really useful for testing irregular expressions um, if you do not wish to leave uh, VS Code itself. And yeah, you can just paste in a bunch of data which you want to match against and of course test and make sure your patterns are correct. I am now gonna jump to another feature of VS Code which I recently discovered and trust me, you're gonna wanna hear this one. It's actually really useful and it involves selecting text. So let's say for 
example, you've got a constant called API test URL. And let's say you want to change the word test to be like production, for example. The way you would probably go about doing this is that you would use your cursor and you would highlight specifically the word test just like this. And you can now change it to, for example, production. And this works, you know, perfectly fine. The reason why you need to use your cursor is because this identifier is written in camel case. So there are no clear separators um, for VS Code to latch onto and give you your selection. Therefore, you need to explicitly highlight the word test. But there is actually a way to make this a lot easier. And I discovered this just last week. So let's jump well, let's bring my text cursor into the word test just like this. You can now use the keyboard shortcut, shift, alt, and then the right arrow on your keyboard, and it is going to highlight the word, and it's gonna respect the camel case of the identifier. So we can see here, it has set the boundaries, right? It knows that an uppercase U means the next word, so it stops at T for test, and then the same thing goes for the API section at the start here, lowercase i, capital T, therefore capital T is the first character of the test word. So you can simply do that, then say, for example, production and change your identifier name. Now, it's also worth mentioning that um, if you want to, you know, jump from shift alt right, just like this, then you want to jump to the whole word, you can say shift alt, uh, and then you can use the arrow keys to jump between your full word, just like this, then you can press left and jump back to your single, uh, you know, subset for example, test here. Um, and you can, yeah, like I said, use your arrow keys to jump between um, those words. The same works for URL, okay, just like this, go between the full word and of course the, the small section, whatever you wanna call it. And yeah, like I said, guys, this right here is really useful and it's gonna save you time. When it comes to Mac users, I believe the command is gonna be uh, shift command and then left and right as opposed to Windows, which is shift and alt. So keep that in mind if you're using a Mac. Now, when it comes to snake case, it is also going to work. For example, API underscore test underscore URL, the same thing happens, shift, alt, right, and it selects test right there. So yeah, this right here is gonna be really useful for you guys. I hope you use it and uh, yeah, look, save some time. The last thing to cover in today's video is going to be a recently uh, added feature for VS Code and it involves the position of the activity bar. So let's jump into the settings right here. We can now do a search for activity bar just like this and we can see we now have a new option called activity bar location. I can choose to position the activity bar on the top and now if I show the entire section here, we can see that we have all of those options on the top here as opposed to the side as it is, uh, you know, like normal. So you can save a little bit extra space um, on the left and right side of your VS Code editor window if you wish to. I am personally using uh, this layout, uh, you know, when I'm doing TypeScript and so on. Just give me extra space so I can see everything on the screen. So that right there is your new feature, your activity bar location. And that is all for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed enjoyed that one and you learned something. If you want to see more VS Code uh, videos like this one, make sure to let me know in the comment section below and drop a like on this video. That's all for now. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.